before the venerable Paisios the Athenite was glorified and declared a saint, before he was a beloved elder whose guidance countless people sought, before he was a simple monk, or a carpenter, or even a soldier, St. Paisios was a child, a baby boy. And like all other babies on planet Earth, he was born into a family, given a name, and immersed in the culture of his people. Given this entirely human beginning, it is entirely human to wonder how in the world did this baby boy grow up to be a saint? What divine power, what leap of human nature lifted Arseni out of the dust he was born into and delivered him into the glorious presence of God, a saint for all eternity? St. Paisios was born in a small village in central Turkey on July 25, 1924. His parents, Prodromus and Evlambia Esnepides, were Orthodox Christians who lovingly followed the traditions of their faith and fully expected to bring their new baby to the village priest to be baptized into Christ at 40 days old. However, the village priest, who would later be named a saint himself, had visions of a terrible trouble about to befall his people and requested that all newborn babies be brought to him immediately for baptism. When Saint Arsenios the Cappadocian held the baby boy over the baptismal font, he foresaw that the boy would become a monk like himself. He had also foreseen the time and place of his own death. On the day of the baptism, Saint Arsenios requested that the baby boy be named after himself. And so he was. Soon after the baptism, the troubles that Saint Arsenios had foreseen came, and all Orthodox Christians in Turkey were ordered out of the country. The Esnipedes family, including little Arseni, were forced to leave their beloved home in Turkey and march for days and days and days to a new home in Greece. St. Arsenios marched with his people, suffered with his people, and shared God's grace with his people every step of the way. Only after he had seen them safe and sound in their new homeland did he fall asleep in the Lord as he had foreseen. Although little Arseni had no memories of his homeland, the terrible march to Greece, or St. Arsenios, he always listened closely to his father's stories about their time as refugees and about the faithful and loving monk. While he was just a boy, Arseni read all of St. Arsenios' writings, trying to learn everything he could from the humble monk who attended his displaced people. Arseni felt connected to and upheld by the saint whose name he shared throughout his childhood and adult life. A wonderful truth about children is that they cannot hold on to sadness very long before their natural curiosity and wonder bubble to the surface. Despite stories of suffering and of displacement, Arseni loved his new home. He romped through the woods, splashed in the cool river, stared at the bright blue sky, and ate juicy plums. As he absorbed the life-throbbing beauty of the bees and the flowers and the trees all around him, his love for the life-giver grew. He knew without a doubt that the God he and his family worshipped in church had made this beautiful world and all who lived in it. By the time Arseni was 11 years old, he was keeping the fasts, reading about the saints and attending vigils. He was determined to become a monk. But as often happens to people who are different from those around them, the people around Arseni did not understand or encourage him. Instead, they teased and tormented him. His neighbor teased him for being too skinny. His brother hid his spiritual books and complained when Arseni kept him awake with his nightly prayers. The other children thought him odd and laughed at his monk-like habits. But Arseni was strong in his faith did not let the teasing affect him. Instead, he lived peacefully within his community and continued praying, fasting, reading, and seeking God's presence in the solitude of nature. 
One specific attack on his faith, however, shook Arsene to his toes. As Arsene grew in years, his mind grew too. He was becoming an intelligent and curious young man, always willing to learn from those older and wiser than himself. One day his brother's college-age friend, Costa, decided to rid Arseni of his childish faith in a god who created man and then became a man. He told Arseni that science was the true source of all knowledge and that nature operated according to its own laws, not according to God's laws. Costa based his statements on the science textbooks he had been reading in college. Arseni had never heard such things before. He asked Costa many questions, and Costa answered them with the confidence of a college man. Arseni's head was spinning. Finally, Costa declared that Christ was just a good man, nothing more. Arseni was shocked, confused, and hurt. His immediate instinct was to run as fast as he could toward the solitude and comfort of the forest. He ran deeper and deeper into the forest, sobbing uncontrollably. Then he saw the small chapel of St. Barbara in the near distance. Still acting on instinct, he ran into the dark abandoned church and fell before an icon of Christ. A thin stream of light passing through a crack in the wall dimly illuminated the icon. Before the icon, Arseni poured his questions and confusion out to Christ. He prayed for a sign that Costa was wrong, that God the Creator did exist, and that Christ the man was also fully God. He made prostrations until his body ached and his knees burned. His years of fasting, standing vigil, and studying the saints had made Arseni strong and disciplined. He prayed all night long. But God did not answer his prayers with even the smallest sign. As daylight came, Arseni stood up and began to back out of the church. Fatigued and sore, he realized that he could never stop loving the Christ he knew so well. Suddenly, the chapel in front of him was filled with white light. Arseni stopped in place. He saw Christ himself holding an open gospel book. It was as if Christ, bathed in light, had walked out from behind the icon screen. Within this light, Christ spoke. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet he lives. When St. Paisios would tell this story about his childhood, he would never say how long he beheld the vision. What he remembered forever was joy and serenity down to his very soul as he gazed at the illuminated Christ. All doubt and confusion left Arseni that day as he walked out of the chapel of St. Barbara and continued his journey toward sainthood. So I wonder, what is your answer to our question? What divine power, what leap of human nature do you think lifted little Arseni Esnipides out of the Turkish dust and transformed him into Saint Paisios, eternally glorified and in the presence of his beloved God. <laughs> Oh, my love.